I'm Nurse Amy, and I'm from the Dr. Bones and Nurse Amy's Doom and Bloom show. Please visit us at our website at www.doomandbloom.net. We have over 150 articles on collapsed medicine, on preparedness topics, dehydrating, and survival gardening. So you can be prepared. Um, today we're going to talk about how to build a pond. Now the first thing you need to consider when you're thinking about building a pond is where your location will be. It is possible to do a pond inside as if it was a fish room, but we prefer to keep our fish outside. So pick a place. It depends on your sun. You want to have a location that doesn't have 100% full sun if you are in the south because you're going to have problems with algae. But if you're up north, it's perfectly fine to have a full sun area. So find a location. We do have a screen here, so I don't have to worry about the leaves and debris falling into our water. That's another thing you need to think about. Are the trees going to shed their pine leaves into your pond and create a big problem? So try to locate it not too close to trees, so it'll be easier for you to clean up. You can do it two ways. You can have an above ground pond, like we've done, which just has concrete block. We initially had a pond liner. There are special pond liners with a particular thickness that are great, and I'll show you a picture in the middle of this video so you can see what they look like. But they have a certain thickness, and they tolerate the, the water and the algae, and they don't degrade um, as fast as some of the liners. So make sure you get a specific pond liner. Um, if you're going to use a pond liner, you need to place it and you'll have to hold it on the edge. You can do this with rocks, you can do this with stones. If it's above ground, you can actually use some concrete and set it down so that the pond liner doesn't slip out. If you're doing it in ground, just dig it deep enough. Ponds should be at least three feet deep. I had some limitations here and mine isn't quite three feet deep, but it is recommended that all ponds be at least three feet deep. So go ahead and dig a nice big hole. The bigger you can make it, the better and healthier your pond and your fish are going to be. So if you're doing it in ground, dig the three foot hole, fill it up with the pond liner and cover the edge with rocks or stones. Again, this will keep your liner in place. The next thing you're going to be doing is filling it up. Depending on your water source, if you're using some city water that's been treated with chlorine or chloramine, make sure that you use a water treatment. Again, I'll show you a picture during this video of what some of those water conditioners look like. But basically what they do is they neutralize the chlorine and the chloramine so that they're not toxic to your fish. Every time you do a water change, if you're using that water source, you need to treat your water. An alternative to water treatments is leaving your water in a container outside in the sun for UV treatment for at least 24 hours. This allows the chlorine and the chloramine to dissipate and then you can go ahead and use that water for your pond if you don't want to use the water treatment. But if you need to initially put some water, go ahead and treat it because it is very toxic to your fish. So fill up your pond, treat your water to neutralize those toxins, and then you're going to begin to add things. The first thing you want to do is get some fish. Now, you probably don't want to start an initial pond with your prized fish. So don't go ahead and get your tilapia or your koi or whatever it is that you're going to be growing in your pond. You want some starter fish. A good thing to do is just go to your pet store and get some cheap goldfish. The fish are going to excrete waste into the water. The waste is going to be changed by bacteria into a neutralized toxin called nitrates. Nitrates are absorbed by plants, so this is called the nitrogen cycle. So you're going to add your fish. The next thing you're going to add is some bacteria. Now I have some here and I'll show you again some pictures. Pond bacteria eats the fish waste, changes it into nitrates, and then the plants are going to absorb the nitrates. So you have three components to your nitrogen cycle. Fish, bacteria, and plants. They all help each other and they have benefits for each other. So you need to have those three components. What I have in my pond is tilapia, 
I have water lilies, I have some anacharis, and I have bacteria which adhere to surfaces such as gravel and these bio filter balls right here. Now, you have those three components. What you'll need to set up is also a filtration system. Now, the filtration system helps you eliminate the toxins that are formed by the fish waste. Buy the biggest filtration you can get. You can build these with a storage container, and there's lots of really good resources online for how to build your own fish filter or your pond filter. And they really consist of some gravel, some um, uh, sand, and also some of these bio balls. There's all kinds of different plastics. But the bacteria hold on to these. So as the water goes to the filtration, the bacteria is neutralizing the toxins. So you want to set up a filtration system. The next thing you need to consider is aeration. Fish need oxygen. Now plants provide some oxygen, but not all of it. You need a large pond surface, which helps exchange oxygen. But also what I do is I have a little waterfall. And so this is usually set up, but I'm not setting it up now because I don't want you to hear the background. <laughs> you can see my little friend here. Hello! This is my helper. Um, so we've got aeration. Another alternative to a fountain or like I have just an overflow is an air stone. You can get an air pump, air tubing, and an air stone. The air pumps are very small, they don't take up much space, and you just drop the air stone in and it creates a beautiful little bubbling and the fish are much happier when they have lots of oxygen. Um, but I just use the fountain and that's good enough for them. Um, the next thing you need to consider after filtration and aeration is circulation. Make sure that your pond is moving. You want to have some movement of water. So what I have done is just dropped a pump a water pump into the water and I put tubing and I just made a direction so that the pond flows in a certain direction. This is not complicated. If you have a small pond, you can just use a small, a small pump. It doesn't take a lot of uh, electricity to go ahead and move your water. So you want filtration, you want aeration, and you want movement. Once you have your nitrogen cycle figured out with your fish and your bacteria and your plants and you have all of these other components, your pond is going to be nice and healthy and you'll be able to grow some good fish. Thank you. Please visit our website at www.doomandbloom.net.